Tom's army has gone over the motorway. Helen Faith waits and listens as a high-speed police pursuit heads her way. Oh, we've got a, a pursuit of a silver legacy heading our way. It's, it's failed to stop for a couple of the guys that have made it speeding. We'll just wait here and see if we can give them a hand. Yep, yeah, um, I'm right up beside the vehicle here. We've got one male offender, Caucasian, a shaved head, but he's got a ponytail, he's got a black power or something on his, uh, he's got a patch on. He's pulled over, but he's not ready to surrender. Comms army's gone over the motorway. With the offender jumping over the median barrier, Helen must drive to the next off ramp to turn back round. In the meantime, other officers have given chase and caught the offender. Good work. Confirm one in custody, or is there anyone outstanding? One in custody, no one outstanding. Comes back to four, ten seven. Roger. Okay, we'll just get out and see what's going on. Which off ramp is that? The man is refusing to tell Constable Ian Carter why he took off. Why you been in law? Hey? He's got something on him. Yeah. A dumbass, an idiot. Yeah. Receiving. With the driver heading for a police cell, Helen and Ian search his car. The screwdriver replacing the ignition key is just the beginning. She's looking for us to see if there's any firearms. Any drugs that might be in here? Hello? Helen's hunch is right. Hey, um, found a, quite a good bag of dope in here. Oh, you might get two ounces. And the discoveries don't end there. I don't know if you want interested in tweezers and a roach. And that's not all. Ian checks the boot. Oh, yeah. Ho, oh, what are those? These plates down here are um, come back to a, another silver cigar. Uh, it's not stolen, but it's been used in quite a few trials from various service stations around the uh, area. So what he's probably doing is put a needs on when he needs to go. With the evidence found in the car, the driver will be safely off the road for some time. It was uh, pretty, pretty sketchy here, almost got hit a couple of times. This ran straight across the motorway, just on the night, the traffic's going pretty quick, so um, yeah, very hair raising. He's very lucky no one got hurt. We'll bring Ian through with the um, exhibits for you, and he can pick you up and we'll do the impound on the car. Cool. Cheers. Helen's confident she's got a strong case. I'm going to take this evidence back through to Central where they're holding him. Um, he's going to be facing some serious charges. People who drive the way he was shouldn't be on the road at all. Constable Bruce Wilson is on his way to a serious crash that has just taken place on the link between the northwestern and southern motorways. Got a two car motor vehicle accident. Ambulance are the informants. Um, they're stating that we have one driver who's uh, slumped over the wheel of the vehicle. Just uh, located, it's supposed to be on the port link, so we're just trying to get to the scene first and um, see if it's safe. At this stage, we haven't really got any confirmations. We've had it in three different locations. But Bruce is finding the traffic heavy going. Comms 4-4. Four, four. Four, yeah, put me off 10-7 with this accident. It uh, does look quite serious, Comms. Bruce is greeted by a badly damaged BMW and fears the worst. 
But amazingly, the occupants are unharmed and stand waiting on the side of the motorway. Comms 4-4. Um, everyone's arrived at the state. Um, we're going to need at least two towies in this location. Bruce talks to the owner of the other vehicle involved. I was actually talking to someone on the phone. Yeah. I realised I was in the wrong lane. I yep. was actually in the lane to go to Hamilton. Yeah. So I, I reduced my speed a bit and I had a look at my mirror, look at my uh, mirror, look out the window, I couldn't see anything. So I came between these two yellow things, yep. moved in here, before I knew it back. But from the driving seat of the BMW, the collision played out differently. What uh, Pretty much just coming down the port lane. Um, the guy decided to change lanes as he was coming onto the southern, just changed into the port and uh, pretty much changed lanes at about 30k and we were going about 90. And uh, we're lucky to be alive, I'd say. The driver, obviously, the BMW is pretty adamant it wasn't his fault. Um, but that, the gentleman there has just admitted to me, um, he's on his phone talking, and he's actually changed lanes between um, what we call delineator poles, which when you have a painted island on the motorway, and we have an area that we definitely don't want people to come through, there's uh, big flexible yellow poles that give everyone another warning that they're not allowed to come through. He's admitted he's driven through them, and um, he's been collected up the bum by the uh, BMW guys. The four-wheel drive hasn't come away unscathed. This gouge here, from looking at the four-wheel drive, is actually where the tow bar on the four-wheel drive has been bent down from the impact and it's actually um, connected with the road. The doors won't even close on it anymore, so it's, it's a very significant uh, impact and I'm actually quite surprised that the guys in the BMW are uh, in as good a shape as they are. It just shows inattention, talking on the cell phone, not really paying attention to what's going on and um, you cause a big accident like this. For the driver and passenger of the BMW, the reality of surviving the crash is beginning to sink in. Imagine what would happen if you didn't have your seatbelt on. Yeah. You would have been probably in that pile of dirt over there, eh? Uh, so, I don't well. even want to imagine what would have happened if you didn't have your seatbelt on. People can complain about seatbelts. That was like serious yeah. whiplash, bro. Like, yeah. serious. Like, we would have been through the windscreen easy. Very lucky, man. I'm not, I'm not kidding you guys, eh? You guys are real lucky. The towies arrived to clear the wreckage but there's still time to salvage a memento. Yeah, but it's like, I'm gonna just remember that, like, like that, that's all I got left, like, for tonight at least. Leaving the drivers and their damaged vehicles to be towed home, Bruce heads off. Everyone's still walking, which is the big thing. Um, and um, the injuries aren't too bad, especially considering the uh, extent of the accident, which was uh, pretty severe and at quite a high speed. The driver who abandoned his vehicle and ran across the motorway unfortunately passed away before his case went to court. The driver of the four-wheel drive pled guilty to a charge of dangerous driving. He was fined $300.